uh, when the project was proposed to me, um, I just thought that I wanted to have a, an honest relationship, proper working relationship with somebody you admired, worked with and, and knew, so that's how it came about. The ideal thing is that you get two people making something that they wouldn't normally make. You want to, you want to do a little bit of a journey and go on a little trip for itself. I think fashion is such an unusual thing because at the end of the day you're producing a product for your customer. It is important what they think of it. Obviously what we do is, is something applied and then has to be worn and everything, but since we do a lot of prints we look at different things and... I think the initiative is so great because sometimes fashion and art don't mix up enough. We wanted to see what would happen if you take these leading talents in their two different worlds, invite them together into a conversation, really let that conversation take its own direction. Britain Creates 2012 Fashion and Art Collusion is a project that involves nine collaborations, each one a fashion designer paired with an artist. The collaborations are very different from video to sculpture and installation. Many of them share a kind of presence of hand, making, craft, and there are also some material similarities as sort of radiance and reflectiveness and jewels and jewel-like colours. They were responding in some way to the setting of the V&A. We looked at the idea of multiples and doing mm. something which had an element of craftsmanship to it. They're all different, they're all unique. Silhouettes of jumpers. We went to the print room and we tried some stuff yeah. out and then we threw the jumpers down on the screen and then that's where yeah. it all made sense. <laughs> exactly. Matthew Williamson and Matt Collishaw had plans to collaborate in the past. Collusion was the opportunity for them to finally collaborate together and one that they leapt at. Matt Collishaw's made a series of works called Insecticides, where he crushes an insect, in this case a butterfly, between two 35mm glass slides, photographs it and then enlarges the result to an enormous scale, giving that tiny death significance, I suppose, but also making it hard to recognise the scale as so unfamiliar. Matthew Williamson's responded to that in a way by creating a three-dimensional contoured relief in beautiful beading and sequins that picks out the highlights and the scales of the butterfly's wing and also creates this um, sort of relief terrain map. So I didn't really know anything about Nicholas what to do, so we kind of, it took, took a couple of weeks to even get together because he was away or I was away or something. And then we had a kind of brainstorming and we just tried to kind of end up with something that neither of us had really ever made before and ended up kind of thinking that we wanted to make a chandelier actually. That was the kind of initial idea. And then that kind of changed into different things that could hang off the chandelier. And then we kind of ended up losing the lights and making it more of a kind of moving mobile, really. That was, that was the kind of journey that we had. Giles Deacon and Jeremy Della are old friends, former bandmates, and had this instant, easy communication. And they were interested in exploring William Morris prints. I think they both responded strongly to the arts and crafts movement's uh, tenet of art for all and in the everyday. So they actually came to the V&A to uh, research a print. They found a stained glass window by William Morris of Sir Lancelot. And that was the basis for the print that they applied to the lycra fabric that they've used to create a full body running suit with a flowing train, a uh, headdress which Stephen Jones contributed and a, a great leather lashed staff. Jeremy Dell has called it a, a, an arts and crafts suit of armour for an athlete. Paul and I came up with an idea about things we wanted to say and, oh we could do it like this great so we had this very simple drawing and then I see the 
Steve at the foundry who I've been working with say, Steve, can we make this? And of course it, it opens up a can of worms. The, the piece that, that we've done together is uh, this big substantial bike held up by the little mouse and uh, he's that big and the bike's yeah. <laughs> that big. So the piece is about um, life yeah. and, and about how humble your start is in any way. You know, the fact that if you try hard and dig deep and however small uh, you start, you can do great things. So it's about that. Even if it's just overcoming a human condition. I haven't even invented it. Almost like a distance. Hussein Jalayan is probably amongst all the artists and designers the one who already straddles the worlds of fashion and art most of all. He came to meet Gavin for the first time essentially interviewed him with um, Gavin in intoning the words that Hussein had transcribed during the interview and Hussein providing a kind of uh, chanted echo behind. From that, uh, Gavin designed a series of rings for the label in the middle of their vinyl edition, which draw on the Olympic symbol, but also refer to Duchamp's rotary sculptures. One of those designs was transferred onto a wooden disc and placed horizontally and that disc rotating is what was filmed to create the video that accompanies the track where the camera follows the rings as if from the viewpoint of a, a runner on a running track or a needle in the groove of a record. When you're chasing value, if you actually get that thing, you actually get that car, you get that thing. There's not a single formula for a successful collaboration and in fact I think each of the pairs approached that challenge in a different way, you know, the, the, the challenge of communication and trusting one another and, and giving up the total control over the artwork. Stephen Jones and Kareth Wynne Evans had also known each other for a long time. They were clear from the beginning that their work should in some way take the form of a hat, although it's a conceptual halo more than a hat. Five glowing rings of LED orbit around a central headband and that's a, a sort of elegant reference to the five rings of the Olympic symbol. Kerith has used light a great deal in his conceptual practice from fireworks to neon and here I think the medium is almost following the fluid lines of one of Stephen's sketches. We haven't worked together, but Christopher and Peter have worked with my husband before, and then this project came up. So I guess the collaboration itself was in the air already, yeah. so when we both heard that there was the option to work together, we were like, yeah, great, yeah. so we can make it happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I made the figure and the face and the hands and feet, and Christopher and Peter made the outfit. And I guess it's, it's a really exciting pose she's in, you know, it's, it's from a yoga book. Mm -hmm. And we, we thought it's great that it's something so athletic. In a yoga pose I certainly can't do, I don't think you two can either. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. I mean, it does look very Francis. Yeah, it looks very you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah but... So it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting how, <laughs> I don't know, it fits really well together, I guess. <laughs> Some pairs work very closely side by side in a, in a hands-on way in the studio. Uh, some of the collaborations evolved through the process while others were decided at a, a sort of planning stage at the beginning. And some of the pairs were able to work in a looser way so they could pass something from one to the other and each add their separate contribution. Mary Catranzu and Mark Titchener again were introduced just for this project. Both of them work with extremely dense digital imagery themselves, so that immediately gave them a, a common technical language, but it also gave them a, a challenge in how they could combine that into one work without um, clashing or, or being at war with one another. So in this digital animation, they've created a, a space, a whole world, where their separate contributions can combine and interact in different ways. So Mary Catranzu's amazing trompe l'oeil prints become a kind of landscape and Mark Titchener's text appears and travels and moves through that landscape. All the artists and designers were very curious to explore each other's worlds and 
and I think that most of them have found it a very rewarding experience to step outside their own creative practice, outside the boundaries of the art world or the fashion world for this time. I even think that some will take something from the project back to their own work and practice in the future, which I suppose is, is the most rewarding that an artistic experience could 